Hi friends, what's up? This is a game of Vincent Kmore against Daniel Dubuff and Queen's Gambit declined, actually later accepted. And I found it interesting in several aspects. First, in opening, um, Daniel plays b5. That's a very interesting move. And later at the end, uh, there is a very beautiful tactic that nobody played, but it was clear that both sides were aware of it. And I will go through this. This b5 move is interesting, it seems that you can grab that pawn, but then you lose the e pawn, so you don't want to grab it. Uh, and for that reason, Vincent pushed to the knight, moved the knight, now you can capture it, but with the cost of cementing the c pawn in the c4 square and bishop of white is very limited right now. So develops the bishop and both sides uh, performing developing action and uh, see how beautiful is black bishop in this diagonal. And finally black castles, white brings the rook in. You may say that why at this position white didn't capture this free pawn, right? It's a free pawn. Yeah, he could have captured but then would face the consequences. First, black kicks the knight. You cannot retreat it to c3, dream square, right? Because you lose a bishop. So you have to retreat it to a bad square, a3. And then gives up the bishop for that knight and the other bishop for this knight. And finally disables you from having bishop pair. Now after black, after white captures this uh, knight, count the pieces, everything is equal except that white is up a pawn. White is up a pawn but has two bad pawns, two double pawns, so and uncastled king, vulnerable king. So, this is not what White wanted to go for. Therefore, Vincent didn't capture that pawn, brings the rook to the center, and Daniel starts to maneuver with pieces and bringing the knights and pieces in. And especially pushing the c5 is important to open up the center. And they don't exchange the bishop. Neither side like to do that. Finally, Daniel brings the knights in. And position of black is awesome right now. I mean, not winning, but it's uh, completely equalized and very good. So, um, Daniel goes a little bit too aggressive goes in with the knight and this knight is uh, going to be trapped here soon and uh, daniel understands the knight situation is not good tries to get rid of um, possible traps uh, i don't know why he did that actually he could just uh, go back it's very psychologically it's very um, difficult to say that my move was bad so i should go back so he captures the knight of you know, no white recaptures, brings the other knight in. No white is better because white at any moment can uh, trap that knight. And this is what exactly white is trying to do right now. So Daniel is uh, not caring what happens in the board, brings the knight in. But then this is a attack with development. Uh, now win a pawn, uh, white wins a pawn and makes a very strong send pawn center and knight of black is under attack what black is doing attacks the bishop but this is a bad attack because bishop then and keeps eye on h7 here daniel attacks the queen but bishop has the in-between move right grabs the pawn with check and only then moves the queen of course black uh, will win that bishop but uh, white also wins one of the knights. Daniel tries to save the knight, but he couldn't. And finally gives the knight and wins the bishop. Sounds everything is cool, right? Almost cool. Except that look at the center. Awesome for white. Look at the king of black. It's basically, it looks like a mated king, right? I mean, only get rid of the bishop on e7 then queen and knight can attack the king and there is a it's a very common mating pattern here especially in italian games so 
even now it's better because rook also joins the attack and daniel goes greedy here he doesn't understand or maybe he understand and he went for harakiri whatever uh, he just um, goes to grab a pawn but uh, white task is easy exchange bishop with bishop then continue the attack black tries to keep the game alive but finally bishop exchange happens and interestingly vincent how major played here he didn't go for for example giving a check that was a good move but he played very major move uh, uh, leaving the edge file open uh, still open for the rook for everything so and Daniel tries to close the line, but that doesn't help. Here is a very beautiful move continuation by Vincent and Daniel, both of them. Daniel moves the rook to c8. You may say, what's that? I mean, just retreat the knight. This knight is in danger, right? Uh, even you vacate the c file and uh, b file. That is the only defender of the knight. Suppose uh, you retreat the knight. Then this beautiful check, king has to go down. Uh, coming up is just uh, end of a day, right? Then there is a very nice tactic. Queen takes rook, queen takes, this is a mate. Yes, Daniel saw this. Vincent played that a sneaky queen g3 move for this reason. So Daniel didn't retreat the knight. Instead, he played correct move, rook, c8. But... This was end of a day because after uh, this check, queen attacks the knight and basically black cannot defend the knight. And it's not just knight is going to be missed. The game is over basically because black's, uh, white's rook is in the seventh rank. White knight is around the king and black cannot do much. So Daniel tried a little bit to kick this knight, but then after Vincent easily defended with the pawn, Daniel resigned. I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to like if you liked the video. Bye.